Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So in this one, I'm going to be talking about some of the, I guess, the must-haves in my opinion, if you're going to be getting into resin 3D printing. I've been 3D printing now for about a year, and I've definitely made a lot of mistakes and kind of put off buying certain bits of kit for quite some time because I didn't think it would be necessarily needed, but actually they make things so much more convenient and really get you into 3D printing a hell of a lot more. So I'm going to go through my list and some of the things that I would recommend as a resin 3D printer and also as well, just throw down in the comments below some of the things that you would recommend if there's anything that I've missed off, some of the tools that I should try out and some of the tools that other people as well watching this video should try out. Be really interested to know what you guys are using. So first up is all the just, I guess the boring bits, the, the safety stuff. Now I go through this because there are things that obviously normally come with a resin 3D printer. You normally get your gloves, you normally get a mask and stuff like that, but they are worthwhile upgrading, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of printing. I picked up these kind of like rubber type gloves and they are reusable because I can wash them back down. They're pretty thick, but the great thing is it means I'm not going through so many different of those kind of like little kind of, I guess, surgical gloves that you get with all the 3D printers. The problem with those little small ones, although they're kind of convenient, you can feel a lot more when you're breaking off supports and stuff like that, is they rip really easily and you end up going through so many of them, just create so much waste. So picking up a nice thick pair of gloves is definitely recommended. With these ones as well, they're a little bit too large for my oddly small hands, but they pretty much go up to my elbows, which is good as well. It means you kind of protect against any splashback and stuff like that. The next one is a decent pair of goggles or eye protection. And this might seem overkill, but I have seen on so many resin 3D printing Facebook groups where people have been shaking up their resin, the lids exploded, or they've splashed something off and it's exploded. They've got either resin on their face or in some cases, people have got resin in their eyes. And obviously you're not gonna be doing much 3D printing if you go blind or if you get chemical burns or anything like that. So it might seem overkill, but trust me, it is worth a while picking up. I personally had a really stupid experience before I picked up my goggles where I'd forgotten to screw in the vat on the Elgoo Marsh 3 and the print bed had then stuck to the vat and come up. And when I went to try and get it off, I, I basically dropped the vat when it came away and resin splashed everywhere. Now, thankfully I was wearing my gloves and nothing went on my face, but that was one of those Eye-opening moments, we realize you need eye protection. Little things can go wrong, and if they do, they can have a huge effect. So goggles, definitely recommended. And the final one is a mask. Now, I've got this pretty beefy mask because I obviously do a lot of priming, and I use an airbrush for that. I don't want to be breathing in all of those particles. When I'm doing a lot, a lot of cleanup, I will then have my mask on, when I'm wiping down all the surfaces and everything else. It's just... It's better than breathing in all the resin fumes and all the IPA fumes and everything else. So a mask is well and truly worthwhile investing in as well. Obviously the little ones that come with the things like your Elgoo mask printers and everything else, they do a half decent job, but I recommend something just a little bit more beefy. The next one is a slap mat. Now this is something I only very recently got. And beforehand I was using my cutting mat, but the problem with that is any spillover, like where you've got your IPA or some of your resin running, when you're wiping it all down, you run the risk of wiping it onto whatever surface that mat is on. So for example, if you have it on a desk, you can wipe it onto the desk, so it's not ideal. The great thing about these slap masks is you can normally buy them in like a pack of two. I believe they do some decent branded ones, just I can't get hold of them in the UK, but I've just got a simple Amazon's basic one. I've now got the slap mat underneath my resin 3D printer. So if anything ever goes wrong, if I have like a punctured vat or I just have a broken screen or I just pour resin accidentally all over the place, it's gonna collect in that slap mat and not go over the edges, which is really handy. The other one that I have is just down on top of that old cutting mat that I was using. And the great thing is when I take the models off of the printer, I can then put them down there to kind of scrape them off put them into the basket that then goes into the wash and cure machine. Once they come off of that, they go into it, and it means I'm not getting spillage all over the place. I don't have to worry about the mess that it makes. And it's so much easier to wipe down and clean up afterwards because you literally lift up the mat, you can wipe it all down. Yeah, it's an absolute lifesaver. And I wish I had invested in this far sooner because it's a relatively cheap one, but it makes a huge difference. The next one is a screen protector for your 3D printer. And I cannot recommend this any more highly. Everybody's gonna have at some point probably some form of disaster when it comes to 3D printing, whether or not that's the FEP getting punctured or spillage or just anything like that. And the last thing that you want is cured resin on your screen because it means you then have to try and scrape it off or clean it off and that means you might be damaging your screen or scratching it or anything like that. Having a screen protector on it means that if you do have that kind of disaster, you can then just peel off the screen protector 
and pop a new one on and you're not really going to damage that screen or hopefully you're not unless you have an absolutely huge disaster. I didn't do this on my previous Elgoo Mars Pro and I did have bits of resin on it which was a bit of a pain. I scraped them off most of the time. You could see those little like micro scratches on the screen. How much that was affecting the quality of the prints, I don't know. But over time, if you're constantly having that, you are going to end up with some issues. So a screen protector is well and truly worth the investment. The next one, and this has probably been my favourite purchase for a resin 3D printer, apart from the resin 3D printer itself, and that is the wash and cure machine. Now, you can get these for pretty much any size of machine. Mine is a little bit too small at the moment for the Elgoo Mars 3, and I have to scrape everything off into the basket rather than putting the build plate in. But it was a lifesaver. I hated like with a passion doing the cleanup beforehand, you're kind of dipping it into multiple things of IPA or whatever you were using as your cleaning solution. And I could never get them that clean. And then curing was just a nightmare. I'm in the UK, we don't have sun, it just never comes here. So having this machine made all the difference. It took a lot of the chore out of that cleanup process and the cure process. I love it. I cannot recommend this any highly enough. Doesn't make sense. And the final one I'm going to recommend is a bottle warmer. Now I have this left over from my two children when we used to warm up their bottles and it's great because it heats up the water to a decent temperature. It's not too hot, not too cold, just like Goldilocks. You dip your model in there and then you can peel off the support. I did a full video on this previously and it is well and truly worthwhile trying out. If you're into the hot water method for removing support, this just gets it pretty much to that perfect temperature and you're not then having to dispose of water over and over again because that means you have to pour it into a container, cure the bits and then get rid of it properly. With this, you can literally leave it in there and it's just great, you can go back to it. Some people have recommended using a heat gun and that's not a method I've tried out myself yet, but that could also be worthwhile giving a go. And I'll probably try that in the future. So they are the accessories I'd recommend if you're getting into being a resin 3D printer, they are some really standout ones there. Some are essential, like your safety stuff, and some are nice to have, like your washing cure machine. They make all the difference and over the past year, they are the things that really stand out to me as being Things that I either wished I'd picked up straight away when I got into resin 3D printing, or things I'd at least got sooner. Let me know in the comments below what other things that you recommend for your fellow resin 3D printers out there, or for people thinking about getting into the hobby. Be really interested to know what you guys are using and that you'd recommend. Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, hit the like and subscribe button. Come along for some more 3D printing content in the future. I'll see you soon. Bye.